Praise God. Tonight, are you ready for this? Tonight, for just a little while, we're going to talk about the benefits of believing. Yeah. Benefits of believing. Had somebody say, where do you get all these titles? I don't know. <laughs> they just come out of the Lord's head. <laughs> the benefits of believing. And we're going to start in Romans chapter 10. Romans 10. This is the benefits of believing. Romans 10. We're going to start in verse 8. We're going to read 8 through 10. Romans 10, 8 through 10. Romans 10, 8 through 10. Very good stuff in here. Romans 10, 8 through 10. It's a very good thing to start today with this. Romans 10. You got that one? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. These are some tremendous mm -hmm. verses here. Mm -hmm. I think that if we look into this, this is really benefits of believing. The Bible says clearly... The word, it's near you. It's the word of faith that we preach. This is the word. It's all over you. It's, it's near you. When you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you believe. This is the benefit of believing. Believe in your heart. Anything. This is the first thing it talks about. It talks about salvation. Believe in your heart. God raised him for the dead. You'll be saved. But this works for anything in faith. You have faith in your heart. You, you've got to confess with your mouth, but you've got to have faith in your heart for it. It's God's plan to get things from him. You confess with your mouth and you believe with your heart. Now, to believe, according to the dictionary, it says that means you've got to accept it as true. When you believe, you accept it as true. The second part of that, it says you have faith to cling to something. And the third part of that says you accept someone's statement as if it was true. There are three parts. Mm -hmm. It said, number one, you accept it as true. Number two, it says you have the faith to cling to it. You have the faith to cling to it. And number three, you accept someone's statement as if it is true. Now, b with all three in mind, whether you accept something as true, whether you have the faith to cling to it as true, or whether you accept the statement to be true, they all kind of mean the same thing. Right. What we've just heard is true. And this is what God wants you to grab onto first. Believing is when you hear his word and you receive it as if it's true. Yes. Believing is an action word. Faith is a noun. But believing is an action word. And it's not just a concept. But when we speak, it's part of God's plan. It's an action thing. When we speak, we're confessing with our mouth. We're actually saying what we believe. So we put our faith into action by saying what we believe. So that's why confessions are made manifest. That's why you need to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Sometimes we don't confess things. Sometimes we know what we're supposed to say and we don't say it. We know we're supposed to say, by his stripes I'm healed. And we say like this, mm, 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 mm. man, I'm dealing with something. <laughs> we, uh, we should, it's, everybody's dealing with something that didn't get you anything. Mm -hmm. Anybody have a cup of coffee today? Just, just one coffee in the whole house. If anybody, anybody smell coffee today? Yeah. Yeah. If you went to a to a Starbucks, you had to smell coffee. Do you know whether you drink the coffee or not, if you sit in a Starbucks, the coffee smell gets on you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it gets on you. It just gets on you. Anybody know anybody that smokes? Mm -hmm. you know, but anybody know anything about smokers? Mm -hmm. You get around them and you can tell they've been smoking. Yeah. How can you tell? Because uh, they smell like it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we can assume that someone's... Drinking coffee if they smell like coffee. Mm -hmm. We can assume someone's been smoking if they smell like smoking. But it's hard to tell somebody's believing unless you're confessing it. Mm. Right. That's good. 
Because we say you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. You confess anything with your mouth. That's because you believe it. What do we believe? I'm sure not doing as good as I used to. I'm sure not as healthy as I once was. I'm sure not as wise as I used to be. I think we ought to stop all that lame conversation and confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that He raised from the dead will be saved. But you can confess anything and still believe it and it proves that your faith is at work. Amen. Amen. So, Hebrews 11.6. Find Hebrews 11.6. I'm going to let you read that one in the NIV. Hebrews 11.6. You're almost there. Yeah. I don't have an though. Sorry. What do you got? Oh, no, you don't have to read it now. I, new new, I like the New King James. I'm sorry. Say you the New King James. That? Yes, please. But without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Yeah, we all have heard this verse. We know there's two parts of this. you got to believe that He is and you got to believe He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. But the first part of it is so true. It says, without faith, it's impossible. It's not says it's difficult. It doesn't say that it, it, it's going to take a long time. It says it's impossible to please God. If you don't act in faith... Now, listen. You can be in faith, and if you don't act in faith, you don't prove you're in faith. Now, who's looking at to see if you're in faith? The devil can't read your mind. He can't tell what's going on in your head. God is omnipotent. Uh, omniscient. He can't. He can read your head. He can read your thoughts. But the devil can't read your thoughts. He's not God. That's right. He can't be everywhere all the time. He's not all wise and all knowing. How does he know you're in faith? By what you say. It's true. So we say, "Well, I'm being in faith." Mm. I'm being in faith. Mm -hmm. Yes, my faith is working. Mm -hmm. No, the only thing working is your Hummer. Because they know faith going out your mouth. Faith has to come out your mouth to declare to the world it is working. Mm -hmm. Now, faith by itself is not enough unless you activate the faith, which is by saying. You start by saying. Saying and doing are action steps to your faith. Without the action steps, you don't see the benefits because the benefit is when you believe. Faith is good, but the benefits are when you believe. Now, there's benefits to believing. And one of the scriptures says in James 2 and verse 19, James 2, verse 19 and 20, it says, you believe that there is one God. Hey, you do well, but... Even the demons believe. Mm-hmm. The demons believe there's one God. But you won't catch a demon confessing with his mouth the Lord Jesus Christ that he's the one and only true God. Mm-hmm. He won't confess that. Mm-hmm. The demons believe and they tremble. They believe he's going to try to get them, mm-hmm. that he's after them, that they got thrown out of heaven, that they're stuck here on the earth and they're going to torment any sorry soul that'll listen. And they're out tormenting. And they tremble. But do you want to know, O foolish man? Same verse, same verse, James chapter 2, verse 20. It says, But don't you know, O foolish man, faith without works is dead. So if you say you got faith, but you're not doing something about it by work activating your vocal cords or activating your actions, we can't tell your faith is working and it's just as good as dead. <clears throat> but we say, we say it all the time. I got faith. Oh, I'm going to have I'm using my faith. I'm using my faith. Just, I, just use your faith, will you, brother? I'll send you some faith here. Hang on, Jim. There we go. Right there. There's a little faith right there. You know, if we prayed like that, if we just, and some people get around folks and they pray like this. And all that ever goes on is nothing. No. And you wonder, what are they doing? Well, they're thinking about vacation and next week and what they're going to take for lunch when they get, you know, when the week's... 
whatever's on their mind, but you need to activate your faith and confess it. Say it. That's why you're praying in tongues. Because it's your faith believing in God and it's active faith working. Does that make sense to anybody? It's active faith working. Because faith without works is dead. Now, there's a second part. The first part that we just talked about in Hebrews, without faith is impossible to please God because... If you come to God, you must believe He is. Yeah. You must believe He is. Even the demons believe He is. Mm-hmm. And they tremble. It, it, there, that's not enough. That's not enough. you got to also believe He's a rewarder yes. of those that diligently seek Him. He's a rewarder. The second part in activating your faith is believing. And that involves action. That includes diligently seeking the Lord. Yeah. That's an action step. I've had people tell me, well, you just study way too much. I'm diligently seeking the Lord and I'm activating my faith on purpose. It's belief in action. I'm seeking Him. I'm seeking Him. I'm seeking Him. And He rewards those that diligently seek Him. I can tell you as a fact, because I seek the Lord, I am blessed, I am blessed, I am, He pours out rewards on me. I get rewards from Him all the time. I, I don't know how He does it, I just know He does it. He has people come up to me all the time. Let me just get that for you. They want to hand me something, they want to take care of something. I used to say, no, 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 brother, it's okay. That's all right. God bless you. Thanks you. And then the Lord said, what are you doing? I'm trying to help you. Mm-hmm. Right. I said, but I, I want to get it from you. Mm-hmm. He said, that's real stupid. I send you these people with their hand out with my money in it, and you ought to just take it. Oh, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty silly. I, from that point on, I began to receive whatever he told me is mine. I'm taking it. If somebody wants to hand me something, I'm taking it. I've had heathen people give me stuff, lots of stuff. We've had cars given to us. We've had houses given to us. We take it. Because God's behind it. Right. Somebody does not understand. It's from diligently seeking the Lord. He's a rewarder. Mm-hmm. He's, and we're not talking about just your place in heaven. We're not talking about he's got a mansion in the sky. One day in the by and by, it's all going to happen. He handles that stuff yeah. here for diligently seeking. Yeah. When you speak the word, he sees you in believing. When you stand in faith, when you operate in faith, do something you couldn't do before, he sees that as believing. Mm-hmm. It's your faith in action. And even the demons can see your faith in action. They see what you're doing. And they tremble because they see the power of God working on your mm-hmm. behalf. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. <laughs> now, that's the second part. God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. What I find fascinating is God is... <clears throat> let me put it this way. He is a romantic. Mm-hmm. I've had people tell me... Um, you know, I kind of treat my wife with, I, I get great pleasure from my wife. I want to be sure she's always blessed. I always want to take care of her. I, I just love this woman. I love this woman. But when I think about how God loves me, mm-hmm. I, I really had trouble receiving it in that end because I was raised in a denomination that didn't see God in that manner. Mm-hmm. But I see God as romantic now. Mm-hmm. He loves. He loves He loves to be chased. Mm -hmm. Diligently seek Him. Mm -hmm. In James 4, it gets to verse 8 and says it like this. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Mm -hmm. You know, one translation says that you chase after God, and He will chase after you. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever heard that there's scripture that says, these blessings will come upon you in Deuteronomy 28 mm-hmm. and says, overtake you. <laughs> and they're going to overtake you. Because he said, if you diligent, if you, if you work really hard to obey his commands, mm-hmm. when you are diligent to obey his commands, these blessings will come on you and overtake you. Yeah. I kind of look at this, I look at this in such a way that he's wrapping himself around us. 
He wants to overtake us with his blessings. He loves to reward those that diligently seek him. There's such a powerhouse in this. You've got to see this. And when you draw near to God, he draws near to you. In one, this is one commentary from Matthew's commentary. It says it like this. He loves to come close to you if you'll come close to him in the same way someone gets close to a loved one. Mm -hmm. He loves to get close to you like that. Seeking God is an action. Right. An action of faith. It's drawing near with your heart's attitude. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to read my Bible. I like to pray. I've had people say, you know, I do it too much. Well, I don't think you can do it too much. It's kind of like, you know, how often do you tell your wife you love her? How often do you tell your husband you love him? Um, it's not just once at the altar. Are you with me? It should be kind of that's your daily thing. It should be something you do all the time. When you draw near to God, you're actually seeking him with your attitude of your heart. It must be a top priority. It must be something that's always on your mind. How much do I love him? I think that sometimes if we were more conscious of the Lord... We wouldn't nearly say or do the things we do if we keep a mind on him. Matthew 6 and 33 says it like this. Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom mm -hmm. of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Seek first the kingdom of God. This seeking thing is very important to God. It's all a matter of believing. When you believe, you seek him. When you believe, you speak about him. When you believe, you do action things. You do some things that actually... Seeking is an action part of your faith. It's an action part of your faith. Always seeking. Always seeking. Let's take a look at Matthew 7. And verse 7, Matthew 7 and verse 7, it says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For anyone who asks receives. Now, let me, let me help you here. Which part of this verse did you not get? Mm -hmm. If you ask, you will receive. I've had people say, well, pray for me because I'm having trouble receiving this. Wait a minute. <coughs> I don't get it. Did you ask? Ask, seek, and knock. By the way, did you realize the first letters of each one of those? Ask, yes. seek, and knock. Yes. Still spell ask. Yeah. <laughs> for those that didn't get it, he said, ask, and you're going to receive. <laughs> ask, and you'll receive. And he who seeks is going to find. And he who knocks, the door is going to be open. This is not trying to keep it from us. He says, I'm trying to get it to you. you got to ask. Always ask. Be in the seeking mode. Always looking for me. Seeking for me. Always. And whatever you ask, when you ask, you only have to ask it one time. Then you just thank him for it. Because otherwise, you don't think he heard you. That's right. But you have confidence when you know he heard you. It can, you will be rewarded with what you ever, whatsoever you ask, he mm -hmm. says. That's the confidence we have in him. Now, the, the Bible's real clear that we need to ask him. For, we read this. We've got to ask him. Who do we ask? In John chapter 16 and verse 23, John 16, verse 23 and 24. It says, in that day you'll ask me nothing. Mm -hmm. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will give it to you. So yes, you're to pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. Somebody said, why do you always do that? Well, it says so in the scripture. So that's what I do. You pray to the Father, John 16, 23 and 24. Until now, Jesus said, you asked me for nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. 
Ask in my name, John 16, 23, 24. You gotta ask him. You gotta ask. Part of our seeking is in our asking. Some some people might not think that that's part of the seeking the Lord, but who is our supplier? We should ask. Mm -hmm. Did your children ever have any trouble asking you for stuff? No. You know, I've got some grown kids. Well, matter of fact, all my kids are grown. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you never stop being their dad. It, it, I'm going to tell you something. You never stop being their parent. No. No matter how old they get, they ask for stuff. They ask. They need this or need a little that. Now, it doesn't seem like much, but, you know, can you take care of the baby for a week? Uh, can you take care of my dog for a week? Can you can you watch my house? Can you can you bring this? Can you? The, and it always happens. The, it, it's not going to stop. It always happens. So, if you don't want to be a parent, you should have thought of that before you started, because yeah. it's going to happen. It's going to happen. God says He wants to be our Father. He already recognizes that as it is on this earth is an image of what's going on in heaven. Mm -hmm. He's our Father. That's why He said ask. Because we think we can do it. Mm -hmm. I think I can pull this off. I think, I'm, I think I'm smart enough. I think I'm old enough. I think I'm wise enough. I think I'm tall enough. Whatever I think I am, I think I can do this. And the Lord says, no, I get great pleasure when you ask. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what God's... Mm -hmm. the, the He's dealing with that. Just yes. this morning, I mean, this, before we came here, I told myself, well, I think God gets appreciated, feels appreciated when we come and say, can we have this or can you help us with this? We, I, he I said, gets, I feel appreciated. If he asks, you know, why, would you mind cooking me a burrito or something? I feel like, oh, my husband wants me to do something. I said, I feel that's how it feels with God. We were just having this conversation. He gets him. great pleasure <laughs> in the prosperity of his children. But the prosperity comes from him. Right. Mm -hmm. So you got to ask. Yeah. He owns it all. Mm -hmm. He has it all. It is an important thing that we also remember to say thanks. Yes. Now, sometimes we forget to say thanks for the little things. But if somebody has washed our clothes, we ought to say thank you. Mm -hmm. Somebody brought brought us some toothpaste, we ought to say thank you. Mm -hmm. Somebody pays our electric bill, oh, they almost bring you to tears. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. It's not that, it's not like, you know, somebody gave you a, a liver, but it's just huge. It's, just, it's nice to know that God can take care of little things and big things. And through some people, we don't even know how come that person did it. I've had people tell me, I've had heathens tell me, I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know why I'm doing this. All the time I'm going, I do. I do. Because <laughs> I asked. I asked the Father in Jesus' name, and He sent you. You're being used of God. Right. They don't even know. Now, according to your faith, the Bible says, the Bible says, according to your faith in Matthew 9, Matthew 9, and verse 29, it says, according to your faith, let me read the Scripture. It says, then he touched her eyes, he touched their eyes, and said, according to your faith, let it be done unto you. Mm -hmm. According to your faith. According to your faith. Now, it's one thing to have faith, but faith without works is still dead. Mm -hmm. You've got to do something. When blind Bartimaeus was standing on the street corner, what did he do? Why did he get healed? Let me explain. Did he not say... Yo, Jesus, over here. <laughs> over here. The disciples got upset with him, said, don't even, hey, stop it, you're being too loud. But he said, Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Because he knew his healing was going to come from the Lord. Okay. And the Lord laid his hands on him and he was healed. Now, we need to have that same kind of tenacity when we're asking God for anything. We'll put ourselves out there, ask Him in faith. It's our faith in action that God is appreciating. Anything less than action, it's not working because it's dead. Anybody ever had a dead battery? <laughs> what did you get to play off that dead battery? Did you get your phone to play? Did you get your radio to play? Did you get your car to start? How many would say, Duh, nothing. 
I got nothing out of it. You know, faith without works, you get nothing. Right. You got to do something. You got to say something. You got to act some way. You got to seek some way. You got to ask some way. Because that's your faith in operation. Other than that, you're not trusting Him. You're doing it yourself, saying, I got faith. I got faith. James said, You show me your faith. I'll show you. I'll show you faith by my works. Mm -hmm. That's my faith. You can see it. Now, everything in your life happens according to your faith. Amen. Wow. Boy, that puts a whole different responsibility back on us here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, some people say, well, wait a minute. It's not my fault. I'm the, the devil attacked me. Yes, I understand that. But you can be healed. Hang on. Believe God. That's right. Not just have faith that He is, but you got to believe He's a rewarder because you're seeking Him. That's your faith in action. I'm believing He's going to reward. He will put the fullness of the healing on my body because I'm seeking Him with all my heart. I love Him. I'm quoting it. I'm saying it out of my mouth, by His stripes I am healed. By His, That's a scripture and I'm trusting Him for it. Amen. According to your faith, it will, it shall, it is yours by faith. Faith can solve impossible problems. In Ephesians 1, it says this in verse 19, Ephesians 1, verse 19. And who wrote Ephesians? Paul. I'll help you. Paul says, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe. Amen. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seats Him in a place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realm. Now He's far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else that you could even think. Not only in this world, but in the world that is to come. And God has put all things under His feet. He's put all things in the authority to Christ and <clears throat> has made Him over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is His body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things, everything, everywhere with Himself. That's pretty powerful Scriptures right there. That's found in Ephesians 1, 19 through 23. Ephesians 1, 19. I was reading that from the New Living Translation. Amen. I, I use lots of different translations. Jim will tell you. <laughs> I get to studying one thing and I find it exactly in a different way. It's saying the same thing, but it's got just the words that I like. And it's like, whoa, that ministers to me right there. So yes, God will give us incredible greatness of His power. Faith people have special vision. Mm. It's from believing. When you know that you know that you know you see things different. You don't see it anymore. It's not like x-ray vision. Now I've been to the airport and they make you put your hands up and you go with this little thing and it spins around. They look at you and see if you got anything under your clothes or you're hiding anything in your pocket. And they, in machines you can go to the, the hospital and they can take an x-ray all the way through to your bones. Mm -hmm. But it's different than that. This is not x-ray vision. This is future vision. Ooh, there you, go. Yes. you can see things that be not as though they were. Mm. This is future vision. God is so pleased when we speak future vision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that separates us from a regular person. We become then a believer. Mm -hmm. Future vision. Your mouth is full of future vision. By His stripes I am healed. I am filled with the wisdom of God. I have the mind of Christ. The wisdom of God is formed in me. No weapon formed against me will prosper. That's the vision of God. That's a future vision. Can you see? God said, I want you to quit seeing what you see and see the things you can't see. That's future vision. Yes. I can see into the future. You know, you get paid a lot of money if you could see into the future. Mm -hmm. 
man, if you could just see into the future, they, they love folks that extrapolate into such a way they say, oh, they can see into the future. Believers can see into the future. Isn't that powerful? That's like, that's like, a, that's like a gimme from God. That's one of the benefits of knowing and believing God is you can see your future. Where we mess up is we listen to the lying devil that keeps yeah. reminding us of what's going on or what we're dealing with or how bad it's getting or what our body looks like or what our finances are doing or how bad the relationship is. We deal with that and we deal with that and we do it because we can see that. That's where you need to use your mouth and speak future vision. Because then all of a sudden God says, Whoa, there's the man right there. There's that woman right there. She's speaking God talk. That's future vision. That's future vision. That's how I speak it in heaven. I call those things that be not as though they were. That, that makes sense, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. That's like, whoa, that makes sense right there. Now, we don't need to focus on the problem. Mm-mm-mm. We need to focus on the possibilities. God says all things are possible if you believe. You need to focus on the possibilities and quit focusing on the problem. We have a tendency to let the problem overwhelm us. The problem seems so big, we can't seem to get our head to wrap around the possibles. God said all things are possible if you believe. <laughs> all things are possible. First John 5 1 John 5, it says in verse 14 and 15, 1 John 5, 14 and 15, this is the confidence we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, what's His will? Well, the Bible happens to be His will. It is the last will and testament of the Lord. He's leaving us His will. He said, if He hears us, and we know that He hears us, we know He hears us, then we have whatever we ask. Mm -hmm. This is belief in operation. If you can believe that He hears you, you can believe that what you're asking for, He has granted. This is God's power because it lines up with His will. We know that we have the petitions of the things we asked of Him. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So this is powerful. That's 1 John 5, 14 and 15. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Faith must hear. It must, it must be able to know that He hears us. And you can receive it. When I pray, I have the confidence and I believe. My faith is in action. I believe He has heard me. Then I can have the petition I pray for. Faith is the basis of all miracles. Mm-hmm. We, want, we want miracles. I've had people say, pray with me for a miracle. Yeah, will you get in faith? You can't use, keep using my faith. It, you're going to have to believe. You've got to believe. It says this in Mark 9, 23. I just quoted it before. But it says, anything is possible if a person believes. If you believe, all things are possible if you believe. Jesus said it like this. He said, if you believe, all things are possible if you believe. Faith is the basis of all miracles if you believe. Every miracle in the Bible is an answer to somebody's problem. If there was no problems, there'd be no miracles. If there's a problem, the Lord says, I got a miracle right here. I got a miracle handy. He's the miracle worker. If you have a problem, I got a miracle in the making. For any problem that you have, I got a miracle. I got a miracle. I got a miracle in the making. Hebrews 11. I want to give you just a few benefits of belief. I've given you some Examples of the things that we're drawing benefits from, but I want to give you some specific benefits that we get from believing. So you can write these down. I'm going to start with Hebrews 11, verse 1. Hebrews 11, verse 1. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hoped for. 
hoped for. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. You get that when you believe. When you lay a hold of it by faith, we can experience the tremendous power when we believe. The power of God. Now, number one. We no longer need to be anxious about our future. Somebody help me. Why not? Why not be anxious about our future? My God shall supply all my needs according to His riches and glory. Right. You just quoted vision. Future vision. Future. reason you're not anxious about your future is you can quote your future by your mouth. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be anxious about it. You can quote it. You have vision of it. You have future vision and it comes out your mouth. Mm. Future vision. You no longer have to be anxious. In Philippians 4, 6, it says it like this in Philippians 4, 6. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Anybody know what supplication means? Does your Bible say what supplication means? In Philippians 4, 6. Anybody know what supplication means? Is that like asking? It is like asking. Over and over and over. When you make a supplication, you're making an ask. But you don't have to ask over and over. What it is is a definitive ask. Mm. When you make a decision, when you ask for something, they, you're making a supplication. He says, in prayer, make your request known with thanksgiving. Because once you ask, mm. then you thank. But you must ask. Then you thank. Mm -hmm. So you ask first, then thank. How many times do you have to thank Him? Always. I'll continue to thank Him. Mm -hmm. I thank Him and I thank Him and I thank Him. There's sometimes I walk around in the house, I just stand around and I go, Oh, thank you, God. <laughs> no, thank you, God. Yes. You have afforded us a place to live that I would never have thought. This Bible says that supplication is more than petitioning. Yep. It suggests... An intensity of earnestness in extended prayer, not to gain merit by many words, but to fully transfer the burden of one's soul to, into God's hands. Hmm. Mm -hmm. When you ask, you take away, and that's what I wanted it read for, because you take away the opportunity to carry the care of it anymore. He said, cast your cares on the Lord. Because if you don't, if you honestly, earnestly, with all your heart, with an attitude, ask Him and trust Him, it's just the same as tossing your care over on the Lord because He's going to care for you. It's really trusting God. Now, when we come before the Lord and we honestly go before Him with no anxiousness, and that's, where's that scripture found? It's 1 Peter uh, 5, 7. 1 Peter 5, 7. Okay, I should give you. Casting your cares <laughs> upon the Lord, for He cares for you. Cares for you. When we truly believe, when we truly believe, we don't have any reason to be anxious because by our commitment, We've tossed that care over on the Lord and we don't pick it up again. There's no anxiousness when there's no care. There's no worry when there's no care. There's no fear when there's no care. It kind of works in this world in such a way that we don't even understand, but it's like this. In a situation between two people, whoever cares the least carries the most weight. That's true. Let me say it like this. Anybody have a friend that, or a relative, they don't care, they don't call you, you really go out of your way to try to get in touch with them, but they don't care, and you're always trying to do whatever you can to make sure they're okay, because they care the least. They carry the most weight. You'd think that we'd pick up on that. Whoever cares the least in a relationship is the one you try to please. Mm -hmm. You walk around on eggshells 
because they care so little, you we don't want to upset them. Let's make sure they're okay. Mm-hmm. So we, we, we tenderly, gent- gently try to take care of everything. And you'd think we'd catch this as a spiritual principle. Right. If you quit caring, you'd carry the most weight. If you quit caring, because the Bible says, cast your care, but we care about it. We care if that thing's paid. We care if that thing's going to happen. We care if our money's not here. We, we, we care. Mm-hmm. And if we cast that care, we'd be carefree. Right. Mm-hmm. And broke. Mm-hmm. Carefree. Yeah, well, if you're not worried about things, right? You, if you're not worried, you don't care. The devil wants you to be worried. He likes when you are anxious. He likes when you carry the burden. But if you refuse to worry, it's a sign of your faith. It's a believing. It's an action of believing Mm -hmm. that I've cast my care over on the Lord. When you quit worrying. I've actually noticed I through this and my friends have been kind of stunned by it. I have joy. We're looking for That's a whole different way to receive it. That's that's receiving the next step as a vision of the future. Mm -hmm. Something's going to happen. Something good's going to happen. We look at things like this is all this is all there is to it right here. We got to just make this work when the Bible says he just works everything into his perfect Mm -hmm. will. Hebrews uh, uh, 11 for he's I'll just work this into my I'll just I'll just take whatever's happening here. I'll just make it work. And we get so upset if we get a letter from the IRS. We're freaking out. We're trying to figure out what do we need to do. Let's take care of this. We got a letter. Hey, I know of a guy that that forgot to pay a payment. It was a hundred bucks, and forgot to pay the payment. And they assessed something on him. And what they assess on him? Almost thousand dollars. They assessed it. He was late on his payment. They assessed a thousand dollars. You can't do that. But they did. They threatened him. It's not the thing itself. It's the fear of the thing itself. Right. The threat became tremendous. But in if you his... know who you are in Christ, and you know who he's on your side, then those threats, those things can't You can't you. care. Because exactly. as soon as you care, the devil knows, I, I got him. You got him. Mm-hmm. You gotta cast that care over on the Lord. You gotta trust in God. You gotta believe for the best by your not worrying. Mm-hmm. That's important. Now, when we truly believe, we don't have a single word to be, uh, a single reason to be anxious because we've cast our care and we're focusing on our future instead of on our present. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's important. Now, number two, believing. Believing. Believing what? I think we ought to believe we become confident, strong, and brave. I think we ought to believe that we become confident. Now, our confidence needs to be in God. Yes. But if we believe we're confident, it's because of God. He's on our side. I've had people come and, atta- and try to attack me. A huge group of people. I thought these guys were going to really try to take me out. It, was, it happened at a youth camp. I remember I went down there like bold as a lion. I was going to take care of these things. These guys were not part of our group and they camped over the ridge. They were trying to accost our girls, accost our girls in the camp. Try to get them to come down there and be with them. Man, I'm the youth pastor. I was frying my cookies. Mm-hmm. And I, I said, no, that's not going to happen. And I went down there. Here's all these biker kind of dudes and they're all ready to give me the chain action and all this stuff. And I'm down there and I'm just speaking the word over them. Get out of here in the name of Jesus. And I'm, I'm just yelling. And they all started to leave. I said, well, praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I turned around and the entire 200 boys that were in the camp were behind me. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. well, praise God. Awesome. <laughs> and he sent a backup just in case, you know, just, to, I was so confident in God and I was thrilled that all the action started to take place. And I turned around and looked at all them boys were standing up there and they're just, yay, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> what a witness for them. But, it, tremendous because we had us a revival yeah. 
in that mm-hmm. camp. We could have looked awesome. at it like we were attacked and these hoodlums were trying to take advantage of but it turned around for the good of God. They, mm-hmm. Every one of them got such a spirit-filled action. I'm in the middle of preaching the very next night. I'm preaching the Spirit of God starts hovering <coughs> over the amphitheater. He's hovering over that thing. And all I did was throw my hand out like that. And every... You were there. Mm-hmm. What happened? They fell down. Everybody in the room hit the floor. Mm-hmm. Not because they were out in the power. Not because they decided to bow down and pray. They just fell out. Everybody. I stood on the stage and I was like, I just laid down because I didn't want to... <laughs> I didn't want to miss anything, you know. I laid down on the ground so I could receive from the Lord. But it was the power of God. It would not have happened had we decided we were going to succumb to some hoodlums. Fear. And fear was going to take its place. It did not have a chance because we didn't care. It was casting our care and the Lord. Now, whether they saw those boys or them angels that were behind me, they had... I don't know which one it was, but I do know this. They turned and fled. Amen. 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 Praise God. (laughs) Believe that we're going to be strong. And believe we're going to be brave. In 2 Chronicles 16 and verse 9, 2 Chronicles 16 and verse 9, it says, The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show Himself strong. On the behalf of those whose heart is loyal to Him. I'm telling you what, there's always going to be some reason, some way, the enemy's out to kill, steal, and destroy everyone. But if you're going to be strong in the Lord, it's because He's right there to stand up and stand with those whose heart is loyal to Him. Amen. And when we have... Faith, I'm talking about believing. When we have the belief of God in our mouth, we're not talking about muddling around with it. We're talking about through the strength of the Lord. In Romans 10 and verse 16, it says, And the God of peace, Romans 16 and verse, uh, excuse me, Romans 16 and verse uh, 20. Yes, verse 20. Romans 16 and verse 20, it says, The God of peace will crush Satan. Oh, yeah. Under your feet shortly. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be upon you all. Amen. The God of peace will crush Satan. Faith, I'm praying for faith to make me strong and bold and confident. I want you to write that down and that's what you ought to pray over yourself. I pray for the faith of God. The believing, I'm believing I'm believing with my mouth. I'm saying with my mouth, I confess this. I'm bold and I'm strong and I'm confident. You know what we pray for a lot? I pray we're bold. Anybody ever pray I'd be bolder? Mm-hmm. You ever prayed that? Mm-hmm. God make me bolder. I've had some times where I have an opportunity to say something about Christ. And there are certain times I, I don't. But I pray be bolder and I find myself bolder. It just comes out. Be bold, be strong, be confident. Number three, this is a benefit of believing. We were made by believing to experience joy. By believing. We can experience joy by believing. Philippians 1 and verse 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, He who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Man, what a good word to us. He's not done with me yet. But He's working. I'm working on something. I'm working on something. You got to be confident that He is the God that's working on you. He's working. He's working on you. What has He already worked on? Worked in you. He's working on me. He's working on me. He's working on my freedom from all sin. He's working on my freedom. He's working on me to be transformed to the image of God, to the image of Christ. 
He's working on me. And He will work on me and complete it. It, the Bible says He's going to work on me and complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, we know this about Jesus Christ. We know this. Within the presence of the Lord, there is fullness mm -hmm. of joy. Mm -hmm. We don't we know that. We know that. If we know that in the presence of the Lord, I'm conforming to the image of God. I'm conforming to the image of Christ. Mm -hmm. Wherever I go, I'm full of joy. Those are good word right there. That's a good word. Here's number four. Number four. Whenever we're believing, a benefit of believing is you become immovable. A benefit of believing. You become immovable. I'm going to read to you Psalms 125 and verse 1. It says, those who trust in the Lord, that's those that are believing in Him, those that trust in the Lord are exactly like Mount Zion. They cannot be moved. <laughs> he abides in them forever. They cannot be moved. So when you are in belief, always in belief, you're immovable. Immovable. Praise God. Matthew 7 and verse 24, it says it like this. Therefore, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house upon the rock. <laughs> and the rains descended and the floods came. How many have problems like rain and flood? We've had lots of different kinds of problems, but they can equate to late rain, like rains and floods. And the winds blew, and they beat against the house, but it would not fall. It was immovable because it was founded on the rock. Mm -hmm. Nothing moves you when you're believing. If you're believing in God, showing Him by your actions, showing Him by your words, showing Him by your faith in action... You're believing and you are immovable. Number five, this is the last one, fifth one. This is a benefit of believing. You are partakers of the divine nature. Mm -hmm. You are partaker by believing. You are partakers of the divine nature. Second Peter 1, verse 3. 2 Peter 1, verse 3. As His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, 2 Peter 1, 3, through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these, I'm talking about when you speak those promises, when you continually speak those promises, it comes out of your mouth. This is faith and operation. It's your belief. Through these, you might be partakers of the divine nature. Mm. Somebody said, I don't know why you want us to confess all the time. Because the Bible says you ought to confess. It says confess. What are you confessing? The Word. You confess the Word, which is His will. You confess the Word and you become a partaker of His divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. If we believe, if we speak, if we speak that word, we become partakers of the divine nature. We have enacted the power of God that is inside of us, which is one of the benefits of believing. Now, I gave you five additional benefits. Hang on to these. And remember this one word you heard tonight. you got to speak future vision. The vision of the future. If you speak the vision of the future, you're speaking just like God. Yeah, that's another word for that is prophetic. Prophecy. That's right. Prophesy to yourself. Which is speaking by the Holy Ghost. And you prophesy to yourself. You say, I am the healed. I am the blessed. I'm walking in the abundance harvest. Amen. That's yes. prophesying. That's right. You're speaking your vision. Speaking. Future vision. vision. When I got that word future vision, that just ministered to me. Mm -hmm. 
It's a prophetic word of God, but it's his future vision. It's the word of God. Amen. That's future God vision. That's good. It. That's what God sees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now, and that's all I have for you tonight. <laughs>